Hello fellow Star Trek fans, welcome back to a brand new episode of 10 Forward with me, Mike Overton. This episode is brought to you as part of the Clone Star podcast, and in this week we are checking out Star Trek Discovery Season 5, Episode 4. The episode is titled Face the Strange. Let's fly. The episode begins with a brief glimpse into the past showing Mole and Locke's shady dealings with an arms dealer that led them to plant a device on Adira. Meanwhile, Ensign Adira is in their quarters talking to Grey, now their ex-boyfriend. Whilst a mechanical spider discreetly detaches itself from the uniform and disappears into the ship's structure. As the USS Discovery arrives at the coordinates provided by Jinal, the crew is met with, well, empty space, prompting a bit of a brainstorming session. However, the new XO, Commander Rainer, insists on sticking strictly to the facts and quickly dismisses speculative ideas from Reese. Captain Burnham pulls Rainer aside to remind him of the inclusive approach Discovery has to problem solving. Suddenly, the mechanical spider activates in engineering, causing the ship's systems to malfunction, thrusting them into warp speed under red alert. Whilst the transporters are down, Burnham and Rayner must physically navigate to the bridge. They soon discover that they have been flung back in time to the era of Discovery's original jump to the 32nd century, finding the crew unconscious in their previous era uniforms. After experiencing several more jumps due to a Krenim time bug weapon, likely introduced by Mole and Locke, Burnham and Rayner realise that they're the only ones aware of these anomalies, thanks to an interrupted transport attempt. They witness past events and must face numerous challenges, including gunfights against the Enwood Chain, facilitated by Reno's unexpected assistance. Each temporal shift reveals more of the devastating impacts of the time bug, culminating in a vision of 3218, where Federation headquarters lies in ruins. Encouraged by Rayner, Burnham resolves to a essentially to prevent this dark future, and they deduce that the pattern of the time bug's effect are a formula into forming a plan using a chronoton stabilizer to neutralize it. However, they encounter difficulties as the device proves ineffective against the Krenim's weapon's temporal shields. Undeterred, the team devise a risky new strategy in involving Stamets' innovative device, which must be activated precisely as the Discovery exits from a warp bubble. The narrative reaches climax when Burnham, now acting as captain, during another temporal shift, must persuade her younger, mistrustful self and the rest of the crew of her genuine identity and the critical nature of their situation. The team successfully executes the plan, neutralizing the time bug and restoring normal normality to the ship, though not without tense and dramatic moments involving confrontations and reconciliations amongst the crew. In the end, the crew find themselves back in their own timeline with a newfound insight and a clue pointing to Mole and Log's next move, setting the stage for future adventures. There's some really good parts to this episode. Um, my, one of my favourites has got to be the broader relationship we now see between Rayner and Burnham. Looking at Rayner at the beginning of the episode and looking him at the end of the episode, you can see that his time jumping through time with Burnham, getting to see different sides of her and the history that the crew have had together, I think has given him a wider and a better understanding of why they work so well together. Um, and I think also picking up from other parts of the season where, you know, in episode, uh, in earlier episodes, Tilly has often said that the new cadets are struggling to sort of gel together as a crew. And I feel that since the burn, that has been very prevalent within the Federation. So to have this crew coming in that, you know, works super well with each other, they love each other, they get on with each other, and they know, and they just gel. I think has has a is going to have a really interesting impact to how the Federation looks going forward. And I think sort of bringing Rayner into that, I think as well, will help. And you never know, he might get his captain seat back because it looks like he's changing as a person, which is a good thing in my book because I thought he was a bit of a dick to begin with. 
um i really liked the storyline it one of these storylines are one of my favorites i love these time jumping episodes especially with this being discovery's last season it's i think it's really cool to go back and you know see significant parts of the show's history as well as the ship and crew's history you know look at michael burnham from season one to now you know they're almost in you know that they're, they're so very different from each other and when you see the two of them side by side in this week's episode you really understand that how far michael has come which i think is is a, is it's a really i think it's a great end to a great show there are a couple of things i didn't like um if I'm honest, they're all technical. There's nothing here about acting or storyline I could pick up on at all. I loved this episode. Definitely one of my favourites from the season. But once again, I'd... it's just down to bad visual effects. I said this in episode one with the Sand Runners. It just looked fake. And we've now got this issue where Michael Burnham nerve pinches herself. She's talking to her unconscious self. And it's so badly cut that, you know, you can see around her head. It literally looks like someone's taken a portrait photo on an early iPhone and they've just done a cut border all the way around. It's really bad. And it was the first thing I noticed in that scene. So for me, that spoiled the episode a little bit. But that's the only thing I didn't like in this week's episode. My standout moment this week is the relationship between Michael and um, Rayna. I'm really looking forward to where this story arc is going. Um, I, I think once we see Rayna soften up a little bit, I think he's going to be an incredible first officer for her. Um, still not as good as Saru, because, well, Saru. But I think he's going to be an incredible first officer. And I think that the crew will warm up to him, I think, once they get his little, you know, mannerisms out of the way. Star Trek Discovery Season 5 is confidently incorporating more classic Star Trek elements, reflecting deeply on the character development and of the series. Though the crew was unaware that this would be the final season, this episode poignantly mirrors the reflective tone of Star Trek Voyager's Shattered. It's reminiscent of Star Trek Lower Decks episode The Caves, and this episode employs a montage-like approach to storytelling. Each flashback is not just nostalgic, it adds layers to character arcs especially highlighted by the episode's title, Face the Strange which is a nod to David Bowie's straight changes, symbolising transformation and reinvention. Sonequa Martin-Green and Callum Keith Rennie deliver powerful performances with Sonequa Martin-Green portraying both her current and younger selves, supported by dynamic stunt work that underscores the theme of personal growth. Anthony Rapp's Paul Stammers revisits his earlier harsher demeanour grappling with the ethical implications of using advanced progenitor technology, adding complexity to his character. And his interactions with Tignataro's Reno are, they, they kind of add levity and depth, illustrating the blurred lines between science and engineering aboard Discovery. The episode, Face the Strange, seamlessly weaves a complicated time-jumping narrative that respects the franchise's continuity whilst exploring significant historical moments from the series. It playfully acknowledges its own acronisms such as Burnham and Rayner's conspicuously modern uniforms in past settings and cleverly explains why Stamet retains his future attire due to his unique genetic makeup. The storyline also plays homage to Short Trek's episode Calypso, allowing for the AI Zora's affinity for the classic musicals when left to her own devices. Emotionally charged moments such as the return of Arium with Hannah Cheeseman's poignant portrayal connect past sacrifices to the urgent stakes of the present. Meanwhile, the episode subtly advances the narrative arcs of villains Mole and Locke, exploring their complex motivations and hinting at internal conflicts. 
The introduction of the Breen as formidable adversaries adds a layer of impending threat and intrigue, skillfully integrating established Trek lore with new elements. Techno bubble abounds, delighting fans with references to Polarons, Chronotons, Temporal Mechanics, flying with the broader Star Trek narrative themes from the Krenim to the Temporal Cold War. Face the Strange stands not only as a highlight of the season so far, but also as quintessentially Star Trek. It's balancing the adventure with introspective character exploration. It exemplifies how Discovery in its concluding season has mastered wavering serialized narratives into standalone episodes whilst maintaining an emotional core that defines the season. Thanks everyone for tuning in to this week's episode of 10 Forward. I have been your host Mike Overton and remember to catch up with more Clone Star Podcast, make sure you check out our website clonestarpod.com for amazing merch, fan art and blogs. Until next time, live long and prosper.